Hey guys, it's Shade, and today I have another Animal Artist Collective video for you. This time we are so lucky that we have, this time we're so lucky that we have three new artists joining us. Haja from Haja Mix, Arlisha from Arlebeen, and Jeanette from Jeanette and Dravana. Definitely go check out their videos. I'm so excited to see what they do. The links are in the description below. In case you don't know what the Animal Artist Collective is, it was founded by Jennifer Charlie and Denise Soden, and the idea was to connect artists and to promote wildlife conservation. And in all of the videos, at least 50% of the profits go to protecting wildlife. So this time around, the animal that I chose is the narwhal, otherwise known as the unicorn of the sea. I still remember the very first time that I learned what a narwhal was. If you ever were a fan of the show Freakazoid, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. There was a segment called Conversational Norwegian and a narwhal burst into the boat and I think I had never heard of one before and I was so enthralled by this. I still remember this little segment totally. I actually looked it up on YouTube. It's only 30 seconds long and somehow this was burned into my childhood brain. I was so excited when I was in college and we took a trip to the cloisters and I actually got to see a narwhal tusk in person. And I was also able to see the tapestry unicorn in captivity. Because if you don't know, narwhals are real. Some people don't think narwhals are real. Narwhals are real. Unicorns are not. But narwhal horns were often used and passed off as unicorn horns, understandably, because that's exactly what they look like. So the narwhal is an animal that I have been pretty in love with for a long time. One thing that you might not know is that normally only male narwhals have tusks. Oh, and by the way, the tusk is actually a tooth. It's kind of an inside out tooth because I don't know if you know like how our teeth work. There's like nerves and sensory stuff on the inside and it's hard on the outside. Well, their tooth is hard on the inside, but it has a bunch of sensory things on the outside. And we used to think that they used them for fighting. I guess it kind of looks like a rapier or something like that. And the males have a tendency of kind of rubbing them together. So people thought that this was a fight for dominance, but it turns out that probably they're actually just sharing information about things like the salinity of the water around them. So maybe kind of like biological file sharing. Very quickly, I just want to talk about what I'm doing. Obviously, Inktober is over and I missed watercolor so very, very much. So I think I just wanted to play with all of the things that make watercolor watercolor and get out all of the granulating paints. And when I was testing out my paints, I ended up just constantly falling in love again, as I always fall in love with the eventually everything mixes paints and this painting is almost entirely painted with those. These little dots are painted with the Copic White. I tried at first to use the Molotov pen, but that didn't work. And the dots are done with graphite from Viarco because those don't move very well and so they were perfect for making dots that didn't diffuse too much. The colors that I used from Eventually Everything Mixes included Peaky Violet, Blood Moon, Black Moon, Water by the Pier, and Cypress Umber. I also mixed in some Genuine Lapis Lazuli from Schmincke and Lunar Black from Daniel Smith. So those are all over there. So in this painting, I painted a cow or a female narwhal, a bull or a male narwhal, and a calf. What you're seeing right now is the calf. So the interesting thing is, I thought this was pretty cool, that when they're babies, narwhals are actually really dark. That's why this one is so much darker than the other ones. And as they get older, they get lighter and lighter. 
Narwhals can live to around 50 years of age, so by the time they get to be that age, they can be almost entirely white. So like I said, I really just wanted to play around with watercolor, just let the paints do what they wanted granularly and stuff like that. I also thought that the narwhal was a perfect topic for this type of painting since they do have a kind of modeled look. Actually, that model book is how they got their name. The word narwhal, nar, is actually corpse. So corpse whale, that's like kind of disturbing, isn't it? The reason why they called it a corpse whale was because it reminded them of like the decomposing bloated bodies of someone who had drowned. So that's not so fun. On the plus side, apparently the Inuit word for narwhal means the one who points to the sky, which makes sense and is much more poetic than corpse whale. Narwhals are actually not considered endangered or in any threat right now, although they used to be because there were 50,000 of them or less. Some people think that they should still be considered endangered and there is actually a ban on imports of narwhal-related goods into the EU. They're still occasionally hunted for their tusks for ivory, and Inuit peoples also hunt them sometimes, especially because their skin is rich in vitamin C, so good for keeping away that scurvy. Their closest relative is the beluga whale, and really they look very, very similar. They're, they're actually the only two members of the Monodontiae family. Monodontiae, I think. So they're the only two members of this family. And it's thought that sometimes they might even interbreed, sort of like how when you have interbreeding between a lion and a tiger, you get a liger. Something like that, but that's extremely rare. To be honest, we don't know a ton about the narwhal. We only just discovered this thing about the tusk being a sensory organ not that long ago. And then just very recently, we saw the first video of the narwhal hitting its prey with its tusks to knock it out. And the reason why we don't know a ton about the narwhal is because they are really shy and really skittish. They don't like being near humans, and we can't keep them in captivity. Every time we try to put one of them in captivity, they die. We're not exactly sure why. It could be because of the food. Some people think that it has something to do with the tusk. But whatever reason it is, we are not able to keep one in captivity. So if it's hard to find them in the wild and we can't keep them in captivity, that means we just don't have tons and tons of information on them. But we know a decent amount of stuff. So here I'm using the Fintech Gold and just putting in a bit of a background circle. This is not going to be the final image that you see, but I just wanted there to be a background because I'm going to put some gold leaf on top and if there were any holes, I wanted there to be a matching gold background underneath. I really liked how I ended up making this composition with the little calf nestled near the mom. Apparently for the first 10 months of life or so, the calf never stays more than two body lengths away from their mom. About that famous tusk, remember I said that it's mostly males? About 15% of females also have a tusk. More fun facts, it's almost always the left canine tooth. And whether it is the left tooth or the right tooth, it always twists to the left, which is 
pretty interesting because you would expect it normally to twist to the right if it was on the right tooth. Very, very, very rarely you'll get a narwhal with two tusks. This has only ever been documented once ever in a female and extremely rarely in a male. That sounds, to be honest, kind of horrifying. Can you imagine that thing barreling towards you with these two tusks? And by the way, these tusks can be like over nine feet long, so that's a little bit frightening. At first, I was thinking to leave it on the white background, but I wanted a bit more color, so I decided to put in this teal color background that kind of looks like water. This is actually the color Tia from Eventually Everything Mixes. And because it's got this multi-pigment combination, it was able to make some really cool patterns without me doing anything. Since narwhal tusks are basically where we get unicorn horns. Let's talk about unicorns just for a little bit. Now unicorns are all the rage for rainbows and sparkles and stuff like that, but unicorns used to be pretty serious business. They were associated with royalty and purity and the only person who should have been able to capture a unicorn was a virgin. Not only that, but a unicorn horn was considered to be magic. People would make cups out of these horns and it was believed that it would be able to cure any illness and neutralize any poison. So right now I'm putting down the gold leaf. I have already put a bit of adhesive onto the painting and now I'm just putting it on. The fun part about it is when it's time to take it off, it feels like you're reviewing the painting, like you kind of did some treasure hunting or something like that. I just used a big fluffy brush that I don't really use for anything to brush away the leaf from the parts where it's not supposed to be. I really love the texture that it gives. You just can't get that with a paint. Here we are, there's a little baby. So there were a couple of areas that I felt were a little patchy, so I decided to do a second layer and clean it up. By the way, like I said before, all of these paintings are available for sale and at least 50% of the donation goes to animal conservation. I will be putting this donation to the World Wildlife Foundation and I just have to show you if you buy this painting not only will you get this painting but you can choose whether you adopt a narwhal or adopt a narwhal and get this kit which comes with a cute little squishy narwhal 
which I think is adorable. Finally, the painting is finished and I thought it was really fitting that it had all of these kind of noble materials in there with lapis lazuli and the gold and I just really loved the effect that it had with all of the granulation and handmade paints. It just really felt like a gift for me painting it and for whoever would love to have this. Narwhals really are beautiful creatures. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and it was interesting and informative and that you learned a little bit more about our happy little unicorn whale friend. Thank you so much to my patrons for sticking with me through last month, which you know was really difficult for me. I have some really cool things planned for this month. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye!